So I was going to call this one Everything You Wanted to Know About Analog Tape, but we're afraid to ask. But I think a better title with this one should be Why We Bulk Erase Tapes. There is a reason. Let's check this out. Okay, on uh, this video, I think we're going to talk a little bit about the different formats of reel-to-reel -reel tape. And I haven't covered them all here. Okay, I, this is a very crude drawing. Uh, there was another half-track stereo called an offset head where it actually had the two tracks offset in time and it used two separate heads. And though that was kind of a dismal failure. That was in the early days of stereo where they basically just took two half-track mono heads and flipped one over and had them side by side. But we aren't going to talk about that one. We're going to talk about half-track inline, full-track mono, half-track mono, and four-track two-channel stereo. Um, as That's what the Sony is. It's a four-track two-channel stereo. And this is why it's important to wipe the tape, and I'm going to demonstrate this. On a, We won't talk about a full-track mono, but the same thing applies. Is a full-track mono is just the full width of the tape. It's a mono head. And some of the earliest machines were full-track mono. On a full-track mono, of course, you cannot reverse the tape at the end of the tape. It plays one direction only because you're recording on the full width of the tape. So, obsolete format. Probably won't see too many of those, if any, around. But the earliest tape recorders were full-track mono. Some AM radio stations used to use them in production, in their production uh, studios for doing commercials and stuff before multi-track recording. They would record to a full track. The belief was that the wider track gave better fidelity, and it does. The wider the track, the more signal-to-noise ratio you've got. So for mono applications, they could get away with a full-track mono head. For most consumer units, it was half-track mono. That's where the tape has got half, uses half the width of the tape, and records on half the width, and then when the tape is over, you can flip the reels around and it will record on the other half of the tape. That way you doubled your recording time. Half-track half stereo was also popular uh, in the recording industry in the early days of stereo where they actually would record two tracks together. Four-track stereo is the one that we're going to deal with here. And basically what they did is they divided the tape into four tracks. Two tracks, one direction, turn the tape over, and then the, the spaces between them. And I, I, I was trying to illustrate this on the other drawing where you've got a guard track to prevent crosstalk or crossover from one track to the next. So there's a slight guard track in between. On a half track mono, there's a guard track that runs right down the middle of the tape. And on a quarter track tape, you've got basically three guard tracks. You've got one between track one and two and track one, another one between tracks two and three, another one between track three and four. So this tape what I've done now is I recorded this on the half-track Grundig because I want to demonstrate something very important. And this is why you need to bulk erase a tape like this before you reuse it. If I play this tape back, and it's recorded at three and three quarters, but it's, it's going to sound fast because I think the little Grundig is running a little bit slow. This one's obviously going to run the right speed because it's an AC synchronous motor. But the Grundig uses a DC motor, and I think it's a little slow. If I play this tape back, I'm going to select the left channel because it's a mono tape, but I've recorded something on both sides of the, on both, I made a short recording, turned the tape over, and just recorded some more back to the beginning. So, listen, if I play it back in stereo, this is what we get. Okay, it's kind of a mess. If I select the left channel, we're going to hear the left channel sound. Yeah, my levels are high, I know. I just stuck the microphone in front of the speaker, right? Now, if I switch to the right channel, what we're going to hear... We're going to hear the music playing backwards because, remember, the right channel here the, is on the other side of the tape, right? It's not like cassette where they record the left and right together. Cassette tape records, they split the tracks the same, but they record both the left and right on the on one half of the tape, and then they record the left and right on the other side. Uh, the reel-to-reel -reel format, it splits them. So you got a track of side A, and then a track of side B, and then the other track of side A, and then the other track of side B. So 
if we try to play this back, the right channel is going to play backwards. If I try to play them together in stereo, you'll hear one channel out of one speaker and the other channel out of the other. But here's where, this is why you have to, this is why you have to bulk erase these tapes. If I just put this machine in record, and I'm not going to record any signal, so I'm going to make sure that my audio source is turned off, and I press, I put it on record. I'll reset my counter. Oh, I may have to fix that. I think I'm just a little bit tight there. Okay, I'm going to put this into record, and now I'm wiping the tape. Or am I? What I'm doing is I'm wiping a strip from the side A, and I'm wiping a strip from the side B, but I'm not wiping the remainder of the tape. And I'm, of course, the guard bands, they don't get erased, they don't get recorded on, but the guard bands are going to have signal in them from the previous one. Now, we're gonna record this tape, just, this is erasing, I'm just recording silence on here. And when we play this back, my counter doesn't appear to be working. You know what, my button is stuck here. I'm gonna have to loosen that cover and uh, my cover is not quite on straight. There, okay. Um, I have to loosen the screws here and center this cover a bit. It's pushing up against the button. Okay, uh, what I'm doing, as I say, I'm wiping the tape, but if I rewind this now and play it back, from track one I can even hear track stuff from track number two that did not get wiped okay now that is why if you take a tape that was recorded on a mono machine be it a full track mono or a half track mono and you want to reuse that tape on a stereo machine, you have to bulk erase it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna record and we'll see. When I play this back, if I crank it up, we'll still hear the other stuff in the background. I'll just make a short recording here because we're gonna bulk erase this thing the right way to show you how quiet we'll make it. Okay, I'll stop the, uh, I'll stop the playback now. And we'll play this back. You can hear the other stuff in the background before I started it. stuff in the background and if you listen you'll hear it fading in and out so what you need to do is you need to use a bulk tape eraser such as this beast that I've got here that I've had for years actually I had to take this thing apart once because I I didn't follow the rules of operation you see what it says here <laughs> this thing draws eight and a half amps intermittent duty one minute on 30 minutes off I, I didn't follow those rules. I was erase, I was bulk erasing a bunch of tapes, and this will actually do video tapes as well, and eight millimeter tapes. It's very powerful. And uh, while well, I overheated it and blew the, it has a thermal cutout, so I, I, I blew that. So I had to take this thing apart to uh, fix it. So to bulk erase a tape, you plug your tape eraser in, and oh, this will also, by the way, it will demagnetize your tape heads. If you turn something like this on in the vicinity of your tape heads, you will. This is this is the poor man's tape head eraser or tape uh, tape head demagnetizer. <laughs> this thing's, as you can see, I don't even have to get near this thing. One of these things will demagnetize your heads. I built the little demagnetizer, but I've basically been using this on my own ones for many years to demagnetize. To demagnetize or bulk erase a tape, you just take your bulk eraser and 
this thing's really powerful. I mean, it'll hold that tape. Look at that, it'll actually hold the tape. Now, you don't want to do that because I just created a big pop on that tape. If I play this tape, listen what I just did to it. So, first of all, I haven't, I haven't fully erased the tape. Because I didn't follow the rules of proper bulk erasing. Proper bulk erasing, you take your bulk eraser, you have to move it around the tape. I just held it in one place. So you have to go like this, turn the tape over, do the other side, and then move it away, and then release the button. Otherwise, you could end up leaving a noise, pop, swishing sound, and so forth. Now that the tape has been bulk erased, this tape will be down to virgin quietness, and all we will hear is the random noise of nothing. Just your standard tape is. You can get, if you do silly things like this with your bulk eraser, you hear the noise? That's what happens if you don't move <coughs> the bulk eraser away when you're erasing your tape. If you turn it off, while it's present, while it's near the tape, you're going to create a lot of noise. So if you want to bulk erase your tapes, you have to, right? And then move it away and then turn it off. Now this tape is ready to be recorded on again. And this is actually highly recommended if you are going to reuse any tapes for any reason. One of these things is great. We used them when I was working in broadcast. Everything had to be bulk erased before we used it. It didn't matter whether it was a videotape or a cart tape or a reel-to-reel -reel tape. Every tape that was being reused for any reason, we did not rely on the erase heads on the tape deck, everything was bulk erased before it was used, just to make sure it's clean. Whenever I dispose of any tapes, whether it's a VHS tape or an 8mm tape, a lot of times when I've transferred stuff off of tape onto digital, I don't give away my reel-to-reel -reel tapes because I can use them, but I've been giving away VHS tapes. You know, stuff that I may have had stuff recorded off TV or anything on it, or shows, or home video that I've transferred over to the computer and I'm giving away the tapes, I bulk erase them first just to make sure that there's absolutely nothing on that tape when I give it away to somebody else because, you know, for privacy reasons for one. But anyway, it's just a quick video to show uh, how to bulk erase and why you need to bulk erase. And more so, it's just to piss off my troll because it's the second video up, upload of the day, you know, and I have this troll out there and I know he's probably already gone on there and he's gonna, he's gonna bitch and complain about how he's gonna, who's go, he's gonna complain to YouTube that I'm abusing policy. And obviously this, this person, I don't know whether it's a man or a woman or whatever, it could be a dog as far as I know, um, but, uh, because, you know, people don't necessarily use their real name on YouTube. But um, anyway, I keep getting this twit that uh, is going off on a tangent how he's going to report me because he's claiming that I'm spamming him. And uh, I guess we're dealing with a person here that doesn't have the intelligence to realize that notifications from YouTube that I have posted a new video are his option his her, or her option. They chose to subscribe to my channel and they chose to accept the notifications which is part of YouTube's policy that if you subscribe to somebody you can turn on the notifications to be notified when a new video is posted. This person has turned on the notifications and then sits there and thumbs me down and bitches and complains and basically threatens me, telling me that if I post more than one video, he's gonna report my content to YouTube. I say knock yourself out because I'm not violating any of YouTube's policies, but I think by making those harassing comments to me, you are violating YouTube's policy, and I do have a case to report you for harassment of me and other users on my channel. Enough said about that. 
We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.